On today's episode of Anime Afterthought, ReZero Season 2, Episode 8, The Value of Life. Holy shit, that's gotta be one of the most gruesome deaths we've had so far. My god, what the fuck was up with that rabbit? Seriously, what the fuck? Now, last we left off, even though there was a last second intervention by Beatrice, we eventually fell to the hands of Elsa Grand here at the Bow Hunter. But before we did, we came to the startling discovery that Beatrice is in possession of a gospel, leaving us to wonder who exactly Beatrice is, and is she an enemy? While we might not have the exact answers when it comes to that, we do know one thing for sure. Another death means another loop. Now this one actually plays out the same as the default one, the, the alpha as you would put it, the first loop. You know the consoling of Amelia, the little group meeting that includes the introduction of Ryozu, as well as you know Garfield drinking that shitty grass tea. But where it differs is Subaru's next direction. He decides to go confront Roswell. Armed with some new knowledge, specifically you know, geared towards Beatrice, it's time to confront this very aloof magician once again. But before doing though, seeing how Subaru is the constant life of the party, he gets interrupted not once, but twice. The first being Otto, who is very concerned with Subaru's demeanor. For everything that's going on, this guy is way too calm. Now Subaru mistakes this as a compliment, say, oh, it's got to know I can keep my head cool under pressure. No, 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 no. Otto explains, like, dude, there's a difference between thinking rationally and being calm, like too calm. It seems that Otto can actually tell that he's putting on too much of a brave front, like balancing out how you should act with how you want to act, especially given the fact that motherfucker is dying constantly, yeah. But before they can really dive deep into his emotional state, the second interruption comes in the form of Garfield, yes. He needs to talk to Subaru. It's a matter of urgence as well as privacy, like, hey, Otto, you stay back. Uh, it's just a one-on-one -on -one little moment. Well, it turns out it's actually a two-on-one -on -one moment when the white Ryuzu shows up and turns out it's an actual different character, yeah. I mean, the clothes was kind of enough to give it away to me, but white, black, come on. Now, remember, he actually, in a previous loop, told them about his plan to undergo the trials himself. He has already, you know, garnered the permission to undertake them, as well as even past the first one with Amelia still struggling, it kind of makes sense. Remember, he actually told it to the black Ryozu last time, and then was just basically, no, 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 it needs to be Amelia, and they left it at that. You know, he took off to the Roswell estate, and we all know what happens. This time, the white Ryozu is not fucking having this shit. She is shocked at the fact that he got, you know, permission to take it, which even more shocked that he fucking, you know, did the first trial. Instead of just demanding Demanding for him to stop, she decides to intervene by having Garfield take Subaru prisoner and go fucking up and lock him up. Like he's hogtied, he's gagged and bound, which is actually a smart move if you think about it. I mean, fucker even tries to bite his tongue off. He's like, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to do, Subaru, but uh, I'm not gonna let you have it. I'm just gonna keep you here until Amelia passes. Fuck you. A few days have passed at this point. He is still being imprisoned, which is actually very scary because now he's left with his thoughts and all he can do is reminisce about the deaths. What's up with Beatrice? Lo and behold, though, out of nowhere comes our main man, Otto. Yes, stepping up. Not only is he concerned with his emotional state, but his actual well-being. Even though he was threatened by Garfield, not to expose, like, hey, I know you saw us go off and have a conversation, and all of a sudden Subaru goes missing. Keep it quiet, I'll give you a gem. Well, he turns that fucker down and decides to go full on commando mode, rescuing Subaru, but luckily he's not alone. He seemed to be backed up by a ram. Ending out last week's episode with a nice little quip about her, even in the granny state, would be super fucking cute. Isn't that right, Barsu? And this is where we pick up today's episode. They are out of confinement and basically it's like Subaru knows what he has to do he still has to go talk to Roswell figure out what's up with Beatrice and shit meanwhile they are still having to deal with the now rampaging super angry fucking Garfield like we saw him transform at the end of last week's episode or at least go full on wrath mode we, we haven't seen his transformation yet but ooh, I'm fucking excited so going into the scene it's question time Roswell I need to know is Beatrice our enemy can she be trusted now he's saying this with a very conflicting face like Roswell even picks up on this like dude why are you saying it's so pain like you can obviously tell that there's some internal conflict going on like do you really think Beatrice would betray you like well Roswell she has a fucking gospel I mean what is going on with that well just because you have a gospel doesn't mean you're part of the witch's cult in fact that's exactly what's going on she might refer to it as a gospel but it's actually not that in fact it's actually better to refer it as the tome of wisdom there's basically two books in existence that tell the future and that happens to be one of them now you gotta wonder if she was given this book by her quote unquote mother, the one that she said she is, you know, using this gospel's guidance to live out her life for this individual. But rest assured that she is not part of the witch's cult. She is our ally. And in fact, you want to gain her 100% allegiance, go up to her and tell her to ask you the question. And if that's not enough, answer the question with an affirm tone. I am that person. For this is a contract that cannot be overridden. Now, from now on, I'll watch my big brain tongue going forward when it comes to Beatrice. But yeah, if we could take what he says as absolute.
absolute truth. It looks like Beatrice is not in possession of a gospel, but basically a future telling book that just happens to resemble a gospel. And in fact, if you want to garner her allegiance, just say this magic phrase and answer the magic question, blah, blah, blah. You have a sworn ally. Now, Subaru at this point still is calling into question Roswell. I mean, he gives us, I was like, okay, if, if I can trust you, if I can believe you, yeah, that makes sense. I have to ask one more question before I leave. Are you our ally or our enemy? Because remember, I mean, a lot of people know at this point that something is up with this motherfucker. Like, how can he have so much trust in Subaru, an unknown character to this extent? I mean, literally, he's putting so much trust in him. And just think about it. He just gave him literally a magic phrase to control Beatrice, who we know is an OP character. So like, there's something up with this motherfucker. And all we get uttered from him is, don't worry, I am your ally. Like, oh, I want to trust you, but something tells me you're up to shit. Like, something says you're, yeah, I, I mean, I'll trust you for now, but I'm keeping my ass on a swivel. Like, I got one eye on what's going on, I got the other eye on you. Let's put it that way. So with his concerns about Beatrice, at least for the time being quashed, the plan is set in motion. We need to get Subaru the fuck out of here, but Subaru knows what the fuck's going on. Lying in wait at the mansion is a goddamn massacre. Like, we have to deal with Elsa, not to mention the mob beasts are getting in. And we know from a full-on frontal assault, like a 1v1 type situation, that Ram, Frederica, Oh God, little Petra, Rem at this point, Beatrice, Subaru, like everyone fell victim to what the fuck was going on. It just, we need heavy muscles. So it's like, it, it can't just be me and Otto, but at the same time, they're arguing like how they're actually gonna fucking get there. And you know what happens in an anime when the characters begin to argue, something bad eventually happens. So out of nowhere comes the enraged Garfield and he is fucking pissed. He makes it abundantly clear. Subaru, I don't know what the fuck you are, but I do not trust you. They even try to utilize this point to help them. Like, hey, if you don't trust him, let's get him the fuck out of the sanctuary. He goes, no, 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 no. I can't even trust you once you're on the fucking outside. Like, no, no, there's no fucking trust in you. And then Ram has to go and bring up the state of Roswell. Well, this will make Roswell happier. This will make Roswell sad. Like, oh, just in mentioning him name pisses uh, Garfield off just so much fucking more. You can tell that he hates this fucker because he blatantly just says it. Like, you think Roswell cares about the fucking sanctuary? Fuck you. And just punches a goddamn tree to smith the reins, like you can tell there is some deep fucking hatred. I mean, we know that Garfield even has the hots for Ram at this point. He even says like, hey, I might be in love with you, but if you keep this shit up, I will fuck you all up. Like, oh God, shit's about to go fucking down. And it does, it does. Obviously Ram is gonna stay and take on Garfield. She is the most powerful character out of the three, including the ground dragon. So Otto and Subaru take off. Their goal is to leave the fucking sanctuary. Like these three individuals can actually fucking leave. So that's their goal. Head straight for the fucking barrier and get the fuck out of here. I do wanna say it's an actual nice moment to see the path being lit by the actual villagers. I was like, you think that Ram was my only help? I said we had a fucking backup. And even though it's kind of an awe-inspiring moment to see these characters root and cheer on Subaru for his safety, it's basically all for naught and actually very tragic. We'll soon find out that Ram was actually, you know, no match for the full-on beast mode of Garfield. Like, all we can do is push forward as we hear these roars in the background coming from this fucking monster. And along the path we just travel, it looks like there's just complete destruction and devastation. So you have to say, before we even have this conflict between Subaru and Garfield that he's probably taking a couple villagers along the way like oh fuck I feel so bad for these characters they're just trying to help they're just normal humans living in this fucking abnormal world like oh it's gut punching it really is gut punching but when once we see Garfield actually come in the screen he is a walking talking beast yes he is a giant fucking tiger and my god is he powerful just the roar alone is enough to blast everyone away now it looks like Subaru is actually trying to communicate with this enraged character. Like, we know that Frederica was able to talk, we were able to speak, so there obviously is some sentience, but he, in this state, is in no mood to talk. And Otto, being so fucking bro, man, like, oh, ride or die, motherfucker, is, I mean, he's gotta be surprised at this point to see Subaru trying to fucking just stand there and talk to him, like, you fucking idiot, pushes him out of the way, and unfortunately, he is the first one we see fall victim to Garfield. He is literally, literally cut in two. Like, my fucking God. After everything he's done, so fucking bro, so fucking bro, he is the first to be dispatched. And then, and then the fucking villager stepped in. Like, at this point, Subaru was already thrust away. Patrice, the ground dragon, is trying to help mountain ship. But you see the fucking, you see the fucking villager step up with like spikes and spears and shit. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? All of them are crushed, bloody, and and just, just, 
He's sitting there beating him into the fucking ground and shit. It's only a matter of time before Subaru is Garfield's next victim. At least that would be the case if he didn't have a magical transportation fucking gem that somehow transports him to a winter wonderland. Yes, this is the sanctuary now in its winter form. The blood that was literally just wet seconds ago has now dried. So maybe it was temporal instead of spatial. Have we been transported to the future? Don't know. Don't know. We can see signs of it. No one in the sanctuary is there. We do see the leftover, you know, backpacks and the belongings of the villagers, yet this place is completely deserted, except for one thing. A little, tiny, white horned rabbit. And it just so happens that Subaru makes this mistake of trying to fucking pet it. And all I can describe going forth is one of the most gruesome deaths I have ever fucking witnessed in this series. And I would say 99.9% .9 of anime altogether. Like, my fucking god. So I'm assuming that this, this white rabbit is some kind of mob beast. How did it get into the sanctuary? I don't fucking know. Is it the reason that the other, you know, everyone else is fucking dead? It does have a little icon on its back. I couldn't really tell what the fuck it was. Yes, but this thing literally in one fell swoop just completely nonched on Subaru's hand. It's gone. It's just sitting there chowing down on its fucking finger. Meanwhile, there's other rabbits popping up from the fucking ground, chewing off its fucking feet. And then once we get the panorama view in as it spins around as a full 360, you see an army of these fucking white rabbits. They go in for an all out Subaru munch fest and it's fucking disgusting. The last one literally eating his fucking eye and oh my god, like I said, this has to be the most gruesome fucking deaths we have witnessed in ReZero so far. Like to me, this one is gonna like, ugh. I'm gonna stay away from rabbits for a while. Put that, just I'm gonna put that out there. So like every loop before us, one death equals a new loop. And once again, Subaru finds himself completely mind fucked. I'm assuming still reeling from that very visceral, gorish death he just experienced at the hands of a fucking little bunny fucking foo-foo. He doesn't even, you know, basically notice Amelia right there. Instead of consoling her like every loop previous, he begins smashing his head against the fucking ground. Like, this is it. This is the tipping point. This is the- Subaru is just fucked. Like, here we go. But I guess that was enough to have him summoned once again to Echidna's tea party. But as we see, Subaru has a different demeanor. Once again, in this, this realm, Echidna makes it very obvious that she fucked with his sloth witch factor, which includes calmness? Like, reassurance type shit and that's why he is so common in this other world but he's like hey because I made a vow to you to forget our little interaction when I go back out there I'm gonna be mindfuck again because I don't know like it's, it's an all uh, a state of perception like if I don't know that you did this my body will most likely not realize it and once I go back out there I will be in a state of fuck all so do me a favor undo your vow I will give you anything anything at all a kid is shocked she goes like you know what I, I can do that but it just I mean is that really what you want he goes, well, not only all that, I want to fucking remember you too. So this shows us a very sweet side of Echidna being shocked by Subaru so many times. And I wouldn't say affection, but just, you know, that someone actually wants to remember her. Like it plays on her emotions very well. And she's, uh, she's okay with that. But Subaru, much like myself, who is just entirely big brain, seems to come to a realization like, hey, this doesn't make sense. How, what, where? Wait a second. You should know. Do you know how exactly I got here? And this is where we get some, you know, giant fucking revelation that she may in fact or does know what's going on with Subaru. In fact, she's actually been watching him for quite a while now, or at least that's how it was put. Like he goes, I, I want to tell you something. She goes, go ahead. Tell me anything. I'm the witch agreed. I want, you know, all the knowledge of the fucking world. We'll see how it turns out. Well, Subaru at this point is kind of being very cautious. We know what happened several times. Not only does telling someone return by death either equal harm to him and he can't say it, or it actually resulted in Amelia's death at one point. So yeah, you gotta be very careful what you say, but we're dealing with Echidna, another witch. So let's see how it goes. Hey, did you know that I have returned by death and I've basically been resetting the world at each one of my deaths? And she so nonchalant and she goes, oh, okay. Upon hearing this and finally having someone to unburden this giant load that he's been carrying on his shoulders since fucking day one, since he has been transported to another world, he gushes out. I am returned by death. I am returned by death, returned by death, returned by death. I've been all alone, all alone. Every time I die, every time I die, and he just fucking starts unloading everything. And Echidna is actually shocked at this point. Like, whoa, whoa, settle, settle down, boy. Settle down. I, I mean, I mean, I'm watching you for a while. Like, no, no, no. And then he just starts bawling. Like, I've been so alone. I can't tell anybody that what's what I can do, what I what I have been doing. Every death, every time that something happens, I die to make sure that the the, the most positive outcome becomes, you know, the set timeline. I've been through so much shit. Like, 
Ah, to see Enkidna embrace him and just pet him on the head. You almost feel a sense of weight has been lifted from your shoulders. Like, finally, finally someone in this world knows Subaru's truth. She knows what he's been going through. I mean, she admits she's been watching it, but she doesn't know exactly any, like, 100% of it. So tell me, I am the Witch of Greed. I want all knowledge in the world. Tell me everything you've fucking been through. I mean, if this episode just doesn't... If it doesn't hit you, I don't know what will. My God, from the gruesome, gorish death we've witnessed with Subaru to finally being able to tell someone to share his one and only secret. Hey, I have the ability to return by death. Now he can fucking talk to her. <laughs> like, I want the next episode is just like them talking, just him to fucking relax. Because honestly, the dude has been through so much fucking shit at this point, it's ridiculous. But like I said, we have started over another loop. This time, like I said, in just the most macabre fashion fucking possible like oh my god where do we go from here I, I don't fucking know so we see that Subaru is fucked if he does and fucked if he doesn't he is stuck between a rock and a hard place and another hard place and another rock and then coming up from the ground is these little white rabbits trying to eat his asshole and shit like my god so he can't take the trials because he'll have the white Ryozu and Garfield pissed out of him he can't even bring it up to the black Ryozu because she just turned him down not to mention we have the shit going over at the fucking mansion to deal with Elza fucking killing everybody we have to deal with Beatrice I mean hopefully we can garner her allegiance with the, the phrase but at the same time like there's so much shit going on if I was in that position I, I feel like I'd be ripped apart everyone is want a piece of Subaru my return by death action to make everything perfect but no one knows what I'm doing so uh, my fucking god this series honestly fuck it <laughs> Uh, I fucking love this series. I really do. I really fucking love this series. It allows you to think. It allows you to feel. There's no such thing as a one-dimensional character. Like, every one of these characters are so fucking unique and so fucking deep. Mystery aplenty. Plus, we still have to deal with, like, the, the overall premise of the world. Like, not to mention the uh, just, just dealing with Amelia and the future kingdom. And, like, there's, there's so much. This series, one thing you should know, all right, is I love series that are dense. Yes, my memory sucks ass, and that's why I actually rely on you guys to remember me. Hey, remember back in season one, episode three, remember this happened. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. But I love dense series. This, a certain magical index, like they're just so fucking dense and just so rich. Like there's just tons of shit going on. I fucking love that. So much so that these, these series make the day. Like this series is my Wednesday. I fucking love it. I love it so much. So enough of the gushing though. You know what I think about this series, specifically today's episode episode like it was fucking awesome but I want to know leave me a comment in the section below what did you guys think did you feel that sense of relief when he was finally able to tell someone about a secret like did you feel as good as probably Subaru did like oh my god Anyways, with all that being said, and more ReZero coming next week, I honestly cannot wait for future episodes. 